you can start to see the wire form here. So I could put a sweet cup holder here because I'm a fat American. Yeah, <laughs> this is what I made at high school. Does this remind you of anything? I guess I just want to say uh, thank you to Mr. Gandini uh, because you inspired me um, as a young artist. This will be approximately the leading edge of the windshield. To not have the blind spot, what I'm thinking about doing is, if you don't like my, my changes, you don't like where I'm going, totally cool. You do something even better. One up me. And then later, when I drive it, we can make fun of supercar owners we don't like. It'll be super fun. <laughs>
was to be a professional race car driver. And the reason those are the two things that I wanted to do as a young person more than any other thing is, those were the two things that I was the most talented at, building and designing cars and things in art, and frankly, driving. But those are two things that you just don't get to do. People don't really get those shots. Well, racing is truly a wealthy person's sport. There's no tryouts for IndyCar. The business has to be there to put you there, period. Um, so let's forget about racing. Design. Let's, let's go back to high school. I mentioned that. So, and uh, why I'm bringing up the King Zero here, and I'm going to mention uh, the artist in Italy, Marcello Gandini, who is the one that designed the car that I was inspired by to build this. Well, when I was in high school, I dro drove many cars, and this was an art project I did in Bob Johnson's art class. And I carved this out of wood uh, and did a car design and made the base, made the plexiglass, hand painted where it says Scorpion and push design. <laughs> and it had little LEDs in it. And uh, this is what I made at high school. Um, does this remind you of anything? Well, obviously it should because the windshield opens exactly the same way on my high school design as was from the original Stratos Zero uh, prototype car in 1970. And uh, I've actually thought Maybe it'd be fun in the future for me to actually build my high school design. <laughs> the first crack I took at designing a car. Uh, I, might, I might zhuzh up a few things here, but I think they could be a really fun project in the future and maybe inspirational for young people. So this is what I did in high school, and I was really, frankly, going somewhere pretty good. However, all of my family went to THE Ohio State University, which can be a great place, so I just didn't know any better as a young person, thought I should go there too. So I got into their design program, and I'm going to condense this story a lot because I'll save it for another time. Their design program centered in fine art at that time, and probably today, was truly garbage. Absolute unbridled bullshit and garbage. I, I, I vivid, oh my dear God. It, I'll make another video. But truly, I, I cannot say enough bad things about product design at Ohio State University. It's just, it's, just, it's just an abomination. I left the program. I got a bad attitude. And it, they just, in no way, I think, were ready for any students that were truly talented or driven. And they didn't give you any opportunity to get anywhere. Uh, and anybody who got through the program would be at a level here where if they just had half a brain, their students could be at a level here. And I was already a level here. So <laughs> needless to say, it didn't go well. I remember one semester, the entire project we had for the entire semester was design a bathroom scale. Oh, and it doesn't even need to work. You don't even need a functioning prototype or anything. And I played that game for about a week. And then I met with the school people and I said, I appreciate what you're doing here, and I'd like to propose something. Allow me to do a project worthy of my talents of where they're at right now. I will meet all of your educational requirements. I will do every single mechanic you need of, like mechanical aspect of the curriculum you need, but let me design something of where my talents are. Let me design a car instead of a scale. Uh, and they said no, even though I'm paying to be at this school. So I did what anybody would do, and I bullcrap my way through the entire semester, did virtually no work until the night before, threw a model together and winged a presentation with everything else, and guess what I got during the semester? A B plus. Now, you can dog on me for doing that, but if they're not allowing me to work to my actual level at that program, why would I invest time into playing a game with them? You get through with the least amount of input possible, and you get out. And I did things on the side that mattered more to my career. Um, and my senior year of college, I ended up becoming a part-time Ferrari mechanic. So let's, let's bring along to that. Just because you end up at a university that sucks, um, and you don't know any better as a young person to get where you need to go or find the right people, doesn't mean you don't keep trying. And that's what I did. So, as you mentioned, I ended up becoming a Ferrari mechanic and exposed to a lot of amazing Italian cars. And as a young man, of course, I loved things from the past. And the thing that's interesting and, and the reason this, and I kind of want to make it a, a bit of a tribute, is just 
the amount of inspiration and wisdom I got as a young person who wanted to be a designer from Italian designers and automotive designers such as Marcello Gandini um, and his designs was so much more powerful and valuable to me as an individual and artist than my terrible American university experience um, was worth. And the, the original car that Marcello designed, uh, the Zero, inspired millions of people. It inspired so many car enthusiasts, car guys, car girls, artists, uh, including myself. I mean, look at what I did in, in high school. Okay, that, that, that was inspired, obviously, from what he did with the Zero. So now as an adult, in, in this way, having a shop and being able to connect with you all online through this, as silly as I've been through this and beating up on supercar owners and all, um, and honestly, I'm thrilled that um, Avalon King has supported my channel um, because having you all out there watching uh, and having people get behind what I'm doing on this channel allows me to do something that normally would never happen. It allows me to, to go on an artistic journey and whim for everybody. And that's not something that normal people get to do because I'm not building this, I'm, I'm never gonna build another one, I'm never doing it to create, but I'm doing it, honestly, I, I thought about this. This is honestly my tribute. Let this be a th thank you. Um, to Marcello Gandini, uh, because that was hugely inspiring. And more than that too, let this be a thank you to my high school art teacher, Bob Johnson, because he actually allowed all of us students to work to our potential and help inspire us to find higher levels of potential, because my university sure as heck never did those things. So I'm excited that I get to share this process of creating this car and the changes and what my vision is for a car to be in the future because I'm not building an exact replica. I'm just not. I think the original car is very cool and it was a very cool styling exercise, but I want a supercar, so it's getting a V12. It's a little bit bigger. Um, the car had nasty blind spots, so the windows on the side will grow and I may add some. The aerodynamics have to change and such. So for me, what I'm doing is I, uh, much like I was in high school with my model uh, as an adult, I'm still inspired by the art of the past and taking that forward to the future. So I hope that, uh, and this I kind of want to do as a formal thing, and I'm going to show you guys how I do it. We're going to walk right over there. I'm going to stop talking. But uh, I hope that young and old, everybody out there alike that's inspired that wants to be part of this, I hope that you guys will take part in the paint scheme design contest for this, either if you have the ability with a 3D model in a computer, or if you can simply print off the pages that we're gonna provide and you can color them. Anybody of any age and skill level, I think can do that. Even if you need help from somebody uh, finding a printer to print them off and take pictures of them and send them in. So stay tuned, that's gonna come up pretty soon. Um, but I, um, I guess I just wanna say uh, thank you to Mr. Gandini uh, because you inspired me um, as a young artist and so many people out there. Uh, and I hope that you find um, maybe just a little smile um, from your work um, inspiring people out there in the future. And um, I hope that you all enjoy being part of this channel um, and connecting with others for the design, um, you know, the contest and getting to send in your designs. I'm, I'm just really excited to be able to, I know that's gonna happen. I know there's gonna be unbelievable um, iterations and things. And the other thing too, you're all artists. I'm not going to stymie you guys like the Ohio State University did to me. So if you, if you get the car design and the drawing, don't just color it in. Color outside the lines, man. If you want to change the design, change it. If you don't like my, my change, you don't like where I'm going, totally cool. You do something even better. One up me. Influence my design. That's what good art should be because it's, it's everybody together. Um, and who knows? Maybe uh, if uh, Mr. Gandini thinks I'm not a complete loon and likes what we're all about to see, maybe he'll even send in something um, of what he'd like to see it become. And I think it's neat because we get to do art and design here together uh, for the world as a car community. And then later, when I drive it, we can make fun of supercar owners we don't like. It'll be super fun. <laughs> Way to go, Casey. You took something beautiful and made it cheap. Well, whatever. Picking on people like that is fun. <laughs> okay, guys, so here we go. Let me uh, yank the uh, 
camera off of the tripod here and we're gonna walk around. So, you can see the wire form here. There's the drawing back there of the original car. I am changing some things, so that's what I, I gotta start with something, you know, but you can start to see the wire form here, okay? And if you notice, like right here, this center line, it comes this way, right down the center of the car, boom. And then if you carry the line in space, where does it intersect? Now, originally I had it intersecting right to that point, but the problem is it changed the weight of the car. It was too heavy at the top part and too light at the bottom. So I've moved that. You can also see right here, like the designation of the front, okay? And then this back part where the, shall we say the insets are, like on the drawing that you can see right up here. Now a few things I noticed, let's do a general walk around. And this is pretty similar to what the original was and you'll see where it's gonna change. The opening in the rear here is quite large, it looks, it looks heavy, it looks too big, but keep in mind that, and I'm gonna go similar to the original, really pretty um, tail lights that went the way around with your opening to cool. Also, if you notice the wing and aerodynamic, uh, it's over there sitting on my dune buggy right there. That's gonna go back here, and I'm gonna change the wing fences, by the way. So the wing fences will actually continue the body lines. It's gonna poke up, so you're gonna have an area right in here but then you'll have the bottom part of the wing fence that'll come off that and fold out. You guys will see that in the 3D rendering. And then uh, of course, here were the original unibody frame rails, shall we say, which is triangulated down here to the pan of the Porsche platform. Now that has to be extended out here. I'm gonna have a little bit of crash structure protection, but that also gives me the opportunity to mount the support for the center mounted wing out the back here. So it'll come out of the screening. And if I ever wanted to remove that and have kind of like a rally looking version that's shorter, I could. So that'll happen. Obviously there can be diffusers, um, but I'm probably not gonna do diffusers for now. We're gonna do it kind of old school and dirty with a big wing. I'm just gonna make a flat bottom. So you can really get an idea and feel and see the flow here. You can see the big triangular opening to the, uh, the rear bonnet, shall we say. Now in the original car, all of the veins came forward so grab the air from the front and bring it in. I'm gonna do the opposite because as the air flows into this car, I want it to come out of the top, not go in for a higher speed aerodynamic stability. So I will invert the nature of any kind of fins or louvers going in here. We're gonna change that a bit, but the design holds true. Uh, now there's another big problem with this hood. You've got massive access back here to things I don't need access to but you've got poor access to the V12 engine. And if you notice, you look straight down, if this is the edge of where the hood is, I can't, let me put it this way. I couldn't get that engine out of that hole. <laughs> so something that's gonna have to happen is here, and since I'm a mechanic and I'm not a uh, you know, sadistic person to mechanics in the future, such as the people that design like the 512 barrel and a boxer and Testarossa, I'm just saying, what were you doing? You're making it so we have to split the whole car in half to change the belts? What were you thinking? <laughs> anyway, so um, what I'm gonna do is make uh, panels here removable with a, a little bit of a seam. I might put the seam right here on this, this body edge so that this whole panel area can be removed and you can easily remove the engine from the top of the car, access the battery, fuel cells, etc. And I also want to get into the design changes coming. But here is where I really want to start with the design in mind. So um, evocative of the original, and I don't want it to be a character. I don't want it to be an abomination. I think that would be unfair to where I got the inspiration from. So I've been very mindful of making sure that the details of the lines and the art I'm doing um, is, is properly paying homage to what inspired me um, and with any subtle changes I'm doing. So the other thing you'll notice is right here, if we look at it from the front, this will be approximately the leading edge of the windshield. These are the edges and then back there is the top. So that's sort of the trapezoidal opening of the windscreen. And you can see this right here. You'll also notice that if the windscreen is about here, the occupants heads will be behind it. Um, and here's where we're talking about roll structure and chassis structure. So you see there is none here. The wire frame is here so I can get an idea in space of what I've got going on. So, roll structure. Be just like any race car, it's gonna come up real high, right about to the top of this, go straight across like that, and it's gonna go down to that frame rail. And then be triangulated, and I'll be able to have a uh, shoulder harness bar going in across that way um, for your seatbelt pickup points and such. Now, the thing about that is, though, if we look at it, here's the frame rail, right? But the bodywork comes way out here, and then if you have your tube here and going up, 
Um, that's for the roll structure. There needs to be some side impact sort of things going on here. So right here, this will be the edge of the bodywork, okay? And there'll be windowage going on here and windowage going on down there, similar to the original, which the drawing is shown up there. So there'll be a side impact bar going through here um, and then doing interesting things up in there. <laughs> I'll get to it later, right? And obviously there'll be something that comes up here and there'll be more that comes up here. So it'll create a side impact cage um, left or right for the occupants and the, um, you know, the cockpit area while um, still allowing full visibility through anywhere where there'll be windows or wind screens. And then toward the back, I'll be getting a little bit more chassis stiffness and rigidity because if there's a vertical tube going up and down here for the roll structure and going transverse across here, it can be triangulated down to here, but also I can take that point and bring it to the top of the shock tower. So if there's any leaning left and right, I can basically strengthen this chassis quite a lot. You can see the uh, triangulation that goes with the X-brace here that was added to the top of the towers um, and what was left of the stock unibody chassis. Also, you can see because it's so darn low and we've changed geometry, I've had to slit the heck out of these things so that this car doesn't become stance life bra, so you can get proper negative camber in there settings um, and working on it. In some ways, the geometry won't be ideal, but it's a little bit of a uh, compromise going from that to this. Uh, but in, at the end, I think it's going to be pretty spectacular. And of course, big thanks to Coilover Depot, which uh, has provided me with these fantastic coilovers that's allowed me to, to build this. Now, let's get into the front. So people have been talking about crash protection. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, now first of all, I'm not planning on driving into anything forwards or backwards uh, because that would be stupid and hurt. And also, people heal and cars don't which is a crazy thing to say, but this is taking a lot of time. So naturally, I don't want to screw it up. So here we've got where effectively where the unibody frame rails of the Porsche. And you can tell it'd be very easy to come out here with tubular structure into the front and create more of a cage. Triangulated down here a bit. I've got, I've got more work I've got to go in terms of just creating this as a strong capsule area. And then here, I am going to do lighting arrangement through that opening in the front, some of the original. There'll be LED strips, um, so I need enough room to be able to create that. But that's how I'm going to be able to create the structure there. Obviously, this being sheet steel will create some deformation ability. Boy, isn't that pretty? It's just so pretty looking at how that flows. Let's do that again. Oh, yes! <laughs> All right, so the LEDs will be up in here, and obviously I'll be creating some impact absorption. Naturally, when you sit that far forward, if you drive straight into a tree or a wall, uh, it's going to hurt. But if you drive straight into a tree or wall, you're also an idiot, and um, you're basically proving Darwin right, okay? All right, Casey, why are you so salty and mean? Because as a driver and builder, I'm tired of stupid people saying stupid things and doing stupid things. Aren't you? Ugh. Okay, moving right along, Casey, you're not, you're not paying homage right. <laughs> All right, so that's kind of what's going on there. Now, with an avant-garde crazy design like this, there are a number of issues. And to see some of those issues, let's go inside. Yes, first person POV action. Oh yes, look at that. I do fit in this thing. Oh, yes, yes, look at the feet. Feet are brilliant. Look at the dad shoes. Yeah, dad shoe action 1000. Okay. Okay, so here we are, you guys. So we're in the cockpit and sitting. So here we are. So this is the driving position. This is what I'll see when I'm driving it. Yay! Okay. Here's the edge of the windscreen. See that line right there? Comes up here. That's where it goes across, right above my head. Oop, dinosaur crotch. Yep, that happens. Okay. And then we go down to there and that line right here above my feet is the edge of the windscreen. So this right here is what you'll see when you are driving. Now, if you look to the left, you can tell that everywhere this line is, if you fill that in, this whole area right here until here, that's all blind. You cannot see any of that. So if you tilt your head over here, you can kind of see. If you're doing high speed stuff, it doesn't matter. I'll be able to see behind me, there'll be like a periscope mirror or I'll put a camera on it or something. So it's totally fine on the highway, unless you're slow and boring, um, which I don't intend to be. There's the blind spot. That's the ugly blind spot that exists with avant-garde art and then making it reality. Right here is where the wind, side window will be. And it'll come back to about here. 
So I'll just be able to see it. And if I hunker down, this is eye level for me, you guys, slightly forward in my face, obviously. I can see what's to the side of me, but I can't see what's over there. So I got two options. <laughs> One, I put a screen here, a little camera pointing that way. That's a bit much. Or in this area right here, where my hand is, I can put a thin polycarbonate window, just enough for some visual cl clues. Now, I know you guys are gonna say, well, when you're turning, how will you see? Well, generally speaking, when you're turning, the radius is pretty big. And if you're on a road racing course, you ver virtually never turn the steering wheel more than that. So you can see just fine. Sorry, I accidentally pushed record again. So if you guys look back in history, the original design for the Chaparral 2H was similar to this in seating position, but then John Surtees hated it so much because he couldn't see out of it, and he, he, he demanded that his head be poking out. So <laughs> there's issues to this, and the design of this is very similar to Jim Hall's original um, drawing for the Chaparral 2H, um, except I'm not gonna be a whiny race car driver. I'm just gonna figure out a way to make it work for the engineer. See, this is why I make a great race car driver. I don't whine like a prima donnas. Okay, <laughs> just felt like saying that. Okay, so anyway, you guys get it. That's the trouble with it there in terms of blind spot. But I'm sitting in this thing just fine. I got plenty of room, I'm comfortable, right? There's lots of room here for gauges and stuff and switches. I could put a sweet cup holder here because I'm a fat American. Yeah, oh yes, lots of room. So that's pretty cool. And um, I can look at my feet. That's kind of funny, isn't it, right? When you're driving, imagine that. Um, there's the stick shift. Now, here's some interesting things. I'm gonna turn this around. <laughs> so looking backwards, you can see my head, obviously, sorry. But look how long it is. Like, there's a lot of car back there. <laughs> I'm sitting lower than the V12, the mighty BMW V12 engine, yes. Um, I'm getting excited, okay? Why would you not? This is cool. So you can see what's going on back there. Um, the original car had, I think, a little bit of a window right here. I'm not going to bother uh, because I can just make that steel, which will be safer as a firewall and whatnot. You, you can't see anything out of the back anyway. There's literally a V12 engine in the way. And there's going to be louvers and stuff. It's just, it's not worth what you'd see to have a window there. So the original car had a periscope type mirror somewhere like this. So, which is cool, but it's also kind of weird. So if I put a periscope where my hand is, I would be looking up. So I'd be like, oh, uh oh, we're being pulled over. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, goodbye. You know, like you look behind you and maybe there's a jet. I don't know. It's like a James Bond movie. Oh my God. I'm having that moment of realization how freaking eccentric I am. See, this is what happens. This is what happens when talented people in college go to stupid universities like Ohio State and they treat them like garbage and put them in hell for four years and don't let them live to their potential. They become nuts like me on YouTube and just build their dreams and don't care and then say what they think. <laughs> yes. Okay. Where were we? I get off topic all the time, but that's what you guys get. There's no script. Nobody's telling me what to do or paying me. I can just be honest. That's great. So, um, yeah, so here's the car, and um, that's what's going on. Um, yeah, you can't see out of it very well. And that was my big concern. I was like, you know, look, and you guys can tell here. So right where that welder is, there would be a window there, and there's a window down there so you can see the, the ground going by, which would be scary. But it needs a little bit of a window, like right here and right there. Um, but I think that has to work with the elements and principles of design. So I tell you what, let's jump out and let's just draw on the uh, big drawing on the, on the right here. Okay, I need a marker. There's a marker, yay. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. And I'm doing this totally rogue here. Okay, let me push this welder back. Okay, so, okay, here is this right here is a darn close projection of the original car. Now I did that not because I wanna make it necessarily identical, but because I need a place to start and see what it was full size. So we're gonna talk about the windows and then I wanna talk about something regarding airflow and this and the radiator in there because I forgot about that. So this is like a window of the original design right there and there, right? The problem is the occupant's head is approximately there, right? So let's pretend he's got a helmet on and then there's some eyeballs and that's line of sight, right? You can already see a problem. The line of sight of the occupant is above the window creating a giant blind spot through this area, left to right. So either this person has to slouch to see out there and that's kind of worthless, it just looks cool. Um, 
And that's sort of an issue. Now, there's a couple of bodies of these, one in France, this cool French guy that's into design and art got from the Moonwalker car. And if I'm not mistaken, that guy made this window be bigger. It's about this big, okay? So that was a change made by, I think a French guy, cool artist, that's all I know right now, sorry, um, who got an original body from the Moonwalker car. So he changed the design by making that window a little bit bigger. Let's go back, this is what I do. It's really hard, I just run around like a lunatic all the time and it gets almost athletic to build something like that. So you can see how that changed for what the French gentleman did. I hope he's French or I'm gonna feel bad now. Now, to not have the blind spot, what I'm thinking about doing is this area, it's gonna be a small window and this kind of curves a little, so I'm trying to orchestrate that. It sort of needs this. Okay, so if this is a window also, you will be able to see out of the car and drive it worth a darn. I don't know if I want to bring this all the way back. That's kind of much. And what I mean to say is, here, let's go back. It makes the design look a little heavier. If you make the windows come all the way back to here, it's a little much, it still looks good. Now this window, I'm not wild about. It'll have to do with execution because that window would effectively go right here and like this to allow you to see out. And what I'm thinking of is, if you just need the visual cues to be able to drive it well with that window right there, depending on what color the car is and how it's done, that window could be flush mounted and tinted of a color that works. So if like the car's silver, you could make that mirrored. And then you could make these windows effectively look dark if you want the, it just has to do with the elements of principles and design and how it all balances together. Because windows in cars are not just windows, they're design elements, you know what I'm saying? So like the Omega car, the, it basically has like one effective window. When the doors are down, it wraps the whole way around. It's really pretty. Um, so this is different, and I don't want it to end up looking like a 21 window Volkswagen minivan. So it's going to be a tricky thing, but if I think that that window that I just talked about, let's see, right, I'm looking, okay, sorry, right here, if I think that window that would go here to allow me to see out would screw up the whole vibe and design, then I'll just make it camera um, and let it be because I want to drive the car. It's going to be a great driving car. It's got to be, you got to be able to see out of it to be safe um, and be able to drive it effectively. But I'm, I'm doing this for what purpose? I'm building the car because I want to inspire and pay homage to a designer long ago who inspired me and so many other people. So, you know, it's got to look good. So let's talk about a couple other changes happening here. Now, something I realized, my original design for the cooling and the radiator of this car was to put it there and grab the air that flows underneath the car. So if we look at the, the picture here, the radiator would be about here and any air flowing under the car can be sucked up like this, like a freaking stingray or manta ray eating off the floor. <laughs> and then it can come through and it can come out the back or it can come out the louvers and stuff here at the top, okay? Which works fine. However, this thing's so darn low, it's starting to squish down the airflow on the bottom and I'm a little concerned it might need a bit of an air dam. Now the annoying thing is I've already designed it to be like that, but now that I have the body on, there is a ton of area right here that I could work with. So what I'm considering doing is removing that radiator and using it for something in the future and then making this firewall area open up and just have a trunk area there underneath the seats and have two radiators that are long and skinny that will go kind of at a more horizontal plane right here because if I do that then this big opening right here behind the window I can just subtly bring that in so this opening here becomes a scoop so any air coming from the lower area will be drawn in through here from a low pressure created by the back of the car in the opening as it travels through the airstream cools the radiators goes in the engine bay goes out this whole area is not much being used, doesn't weigh a ton. I think it would work great and still work well with the elements and principles of the design. So if you look at this, uh, this area here, right, the lower area, there's a window, okay? And then this I can alter so it sweeps in and up and as the airflow throws through, it curls up and in and out like that for two radiators. So I'm thinking about doing that, but you guys got to keep in mind, I have to build this car, right? We got to see it. So. It's kind of like, oh man, I think I might need to do that. Like I could do that and it, it, it should work, but this might be a lot better. Plus if I take the radiator out of that area, I'll have more room potentially to work on the ancillary stuff of the engine, even though that's plenty of room and way better than most Ferraris and Lamborghinis. 
So that's kind of where we're at, you guys. Um, but I just wanted to show it to you. This has been painstaking to get right. And I wanted to talk now and get a little more serious that I have basically the wire form there and starting to build it. So now I got to do all the chassis structuring, uh, the rest of that, the cockpit, figuring out if I'm doing stuff with the radiators and how that's going to be, uh, and getting this even more rock solid before I start doing paneling of the body. And even before I start doing the paneling of the body, I have to do inner paneling, like the rest of the wheel well here and such. So fair amount of work to do, but I'm glad you guys are along for the ride. Let me throw this puppy back on a tripod. Oh. All right, guys, so that's, that's basically it. Uh, just wanted to bring you along for the journey. Uh, obviously, with a lot of the videos I've done have been zany. I've done rant videos about crazy things happening in the world that we all think of. But today, I wanted to have a little fun. This, this obviously is really exciting, and it's just something I enjoy so much. First time in my life I've had the opportunity to coach build a car. So the first thing I wanted to do is um, reach back into what inspired me as a young person and build something that would be what I dream. Like take the design that inspired me and evolve it, change it, make it be something that uh, pays homage to the past and what inspired us all. Uh, but what would we dream the thing that inspired us most to be if it became the reality we want. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking my inspiration as a young artist and a young car guy, the ultimate inspiration, and building the supercar that we wouldn't ever dare to dream would come to exist. So that's what this is. Um, I'll have the design contest stuff coming out later, so keep watching. Uh, we'll do it in a way that everybody can take part in, and I hope you do. Regardless of your age or ability, we'll make sure you guys can be part of it, and I look forward to at least showcase your work in videos in the future. And um, Marcello, Mr. Gandini, if you ever see this, um, thank you. Thank you for the inspiration um, to so many. Um, and I hope that um, my work here is a proper homage um, and respectful to what you've done. Um, so I guess uh, thank you to uh, all the designers uh, of our past that we all get to learn from moving forward in the future. See you guys next time.